Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Uh, you might be lost. Why don't you go back to where you came from? Hey, what about my world? Your world? Uh, not sure what you're talking about. Some sort of kids game or something? That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. Okay, fair enough. Let's check it out. Yeah, tell them more about it. In Hero Wars, everyone can find a character to suit themselves. They have cyborgs, aliens, vampires, there is something for everyone. I've been playing for two weeks now, but only unlocked about a third of the game. I'll unlock Chaba next. He's an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. But Celeste is the real S tier. She can switch between a DPS dark form and a healer light form, which makes her really useful in many situations. Also, check out this super awesome outfit that dropped for her. Hero Wars is very fun and really sucks you in. You're going to play it on the subway, at a lecture, or even in between maybe playing something else. It is very easy to start playing, but assembling a perfect team of heroes is kind of an art in and of itself. For example, Mojo the Shaman can't heal Darkstar the Elf as efficiently as the good Grandma Martha can, while the Slow Cleaver makes a great pair with the Swift Isaac. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 Guild War servers, and 100 million players. You can play alone or see who among you and your friends is the best. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five awesome heroes to start dominating Hero Wars right away? Too slow? The answer is in the link in the description below. A big thanks to Hero Wars for sponsoring today's video. Playing with Power members Ashani and Noah are back for another game. They are battling our Mox Pearls, Greg and Chad. So let's see how they will do tonight. We love slinging spells with our Mox Pearls and we would love to play with you too. If spots are available, sign up to our Mox Pearl tier and record a game with us. We hope to see you there. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Chad, Pouting Oscar, Rubbish Reclaimer. This is a deck that tries to cast Doomsday as soon as possible. It uses its commander's ability to cheat timing restrictions to combo off at instant speed. Chad's opening hand contains a Mystic Remora, Mindbreak Trap, Dark Ritual, Verdant Catacombs, Underground Sea, and his London Mulligans are Putrid Imp and Exotic Orchard. Next, we have Greg, Pouting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Vile Smasher the Fierce. This deck, called Curious Control, likes to draw a whole lot of cards, flail around, and eventually make everyone concede out of frustration. Greg's opening hand contains a Mana Confluence, Flooded Strand, Taiga, Mox Diamond, Springleaf Drum, Miscast, and his spicy new include, Krinko Mob Boss. After that we have a Shawnee, Piloting Corvold, Fake Cursed King. This is a storm list that leans into reanimating Dockside many, many times. It wins with either Witherbloom Apprentice and Chain of Smog or Underworld Breach. Ashani's opening hand contains a Skirk Prospector, Tainted Pact, Elvish Mystic, Vampiric Tutor, Mana Confluence, Command Tower, and his London Mulligan is a Praetor's Grasp. Finally, we have Noah, piloting the partner pair of Krark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This deck aims to copy spells, like, a lot. It wins through Classic Storm or Dualcaster Mage Lines. Noah's opening hand contains a Cascade Bluffs, Command Tower, Ride of Flame, Dualcaster Mage, Light Up the Stage, Strike It Rich, and his London Mulligan is an Archmage Emeritus. Without further ado, let's begin this galactic galloping of gambling gazelles. Chad thought of the most offensive nursery rhyme and gets to start us off. Chad draws a card for turn and plays an underground sea. He gets a turn one, Mystic Remora. Chad passes. Greg draws a card for turn and plays a mana confluence. He casts a mox diamond, discarding a taiga. Mystic Remora triggers and Chad draws. Greg taps his mana confluence to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He passes. Ashani draws and plays a command tower. He casts Elvish Mystic. He gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a command tower. He casts Ride of Flame. Remora triggers and Chad draws. Noah adds two red and then casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Chad pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ashani. Chad passes the turn. Greg draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Remora triggers, and Chad draws. Greg taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Krenko Mob Boss. The table laughs at Greg's spicy test card, and he ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He activates Wishclaw, fetching a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Greg. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He casts Ad Nauseam. Mystic Remora triggers, and Chad draws. 
In response, Chad casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Ad Nauseam. Ad Nause is exiled, and Ashani taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Skirt Prospector. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts Strike It Rich. Clark and Remore trigger. Chad draws, and then Noah wins his flip, copying the spells. He creates two treasures. He ships the turn. During his upkeep, Chad lets his Remore die. He draws and plays an Underground River. He taps his Underground River to help cast Doomsday. In response, Noah taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Brainstorm. Clark triggers, and he wins the flip. Noah draws three, and then puts two back on top. Twice. Unfortunately, he doesn't find what he needs, and Doomsday resolves. Chad fetches up five cards from his library, exiles the rest, and puts them on top in the order he chooses, and then loses half of his life rounded up. The table gets very worried as Chad passes to Greg. Greg draws and activates his Wishclaw Talisman. He fetches up a card into his hand and then passes it to Ashani. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast a Dockside Extortionist of his own. It enters and he creates four treasures. He cracks some of his treasures to help cast Seedborn Muse. He activates Krinko, creating two 1-1 one -one Goblins. Seeing where this is going, the table becomes increasingly worried. Greg casts Springleaf Drum and then gives the turn to Ashani. Greg untaps with Ashani through Seedborn Muse. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Still in his upkeep, Ashani casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and then loses two life. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his commander, Corval, Fey Cursed King. In response, Greg activates his Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Mystical Tutor into his hand. Corvold enters, triggers, and Ashani sacrifices Wishclaw Talisman. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a plus one plus one counter. He sacrifices his Dockside through Skirk Prospector. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a counter. Unfortunately, Ashani is not able to get the draws he needs and passes the turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Greg activates Krinko, creating eight goblins. Still on the end step, Greg casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Mind Break Trap onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Noah. Greg untaps with Noah through Seedborn Muse. Noah draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He moves to combat and attacks Chad with Krark. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Light Up the Stage for its spectacle cost. Krark and Sakashima trigger. He wins the flip and loses the flip, copying the spell and then bouncing the original back to his hand. He exiles Harmonic Prodigy and Phantasmal Image from the top of his library. Unfortunately, Noah did not hit what he needed and passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing Mind Break Trap into his hand. Also at the end of turn, he activates Krinko, creating 16 goblins. The turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and casts Ideas Unbound. In response, Greg casts Mistcast, targeting Ideas Unbound. In response, Chad taps his Underground River to help cast Swan Song, targeting Mistcast. In response, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a counterspell into his hand. Still in response to Swan Song, Greg casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Swan Song. Swat resolves, changing the target of Swan Song to Deflecting Swat itself. Then Swan Song fizzles and Ideas Unbound is countered. Next, Chad plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Merfolk as it enters. He passes. At the end of Chad's turn, Greg activates Krinko, creating 32 goblins. An unbelievably worried table now watches as the turn moves to Greg. Greg draws and immediately moves to combat. With all the goblins in the world, Greg swings Seaborn Muse at Noah and 30 goblins at Ashani. Ashani blocks two goblins with Corvold and Skirk Prospector. Before damage, Greg activates Krinko, creating 64 goblins. Also before damage, Ashani sacrifices Skirk Prospector to itself and adds a red. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a counter. Then Ashani and Noah take the rest. Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a wooded foothills onto the battlefield tapped. Greg gives the turn to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and immediately moves to combat, attacking Greg with Corvold. Corvold triggers and Ashani sacrifices Mana Confluence. Ashani draws and Corvold gets a counter. Greg takes it and in his second main phase, Ashani casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Elvish Mystic. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a counter. He adds four black. He casts Underworld Breach. In response, Greg casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Underworld Breach. In response, Ashani casts Tainted Pact. It resolves, and Ashani exiles until he puts Necromancy into his hand. Still in response to Mind Break Trap, Ashani flashes in Necromancy. In response, Greg cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. Then, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a Dispel into his hand. With Necromancy still on the stack, Greg casts Counterspell, targeting Necromancy. Necromancy is countered, Mind Break Trap resolves, and Underworld Breach is exiled. Ashani plays a City of Brass. He sees the writing on the wall and passes the turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Greg activates Krinko, creating, like, a lot more goblins. The turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and casts Harmonic Prodigy. In response, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Force of Negation into his hand. 
Noah plays a training center for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Chad with Kark and Sakashima. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Light up the stage for its spectacle cost. Kark and Sakashima both trigger twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He loses every flip. Yes, all four of them. He casts it again. Kark and Sakashima each trigger twice. He wins three flips and loses one. He exiles Mental Misstep, Springleaf Drum, Jessica's Will, Force of Will, In the Festivities, and a Lightning Bolt. Unfortunately, completely out of mana, Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg makes a large number of goblins and quite frankly we've kind of lost track at this point. The so turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Mnemonic Betrayal. In response, Greg hard casts Force of Negation. Mnemonic Betrayal is exiled and seeing no more outs, Chad passes the turn. At the end of Chad's turn, Greg makes probably about, I don't know, like 500 goblins or something. The so turn moves to Greg. Greg draws and immediately moves to combat. He swings enough goblins to kill his opponents and Greg wins the game. What a very interesting game. The table wanted a shot at redemption, so they go again. Ashani brings back Corval, Fake Curse King. His opening hand contains Reanimate, Jeweled Lotus, Arid Mesa, Simeon Spirit Guide, Viseja Who Endures, and his London Mulligans are Grinding Station and Tainted Pact. Greg brings back Thasios, Triton Hero, and Vile Smasher the Fierce. His opening hand contains an Island, Ristic Study, Delay, Morphic Pool, Mox Amber, Deathrite Shaman, and Verdant Catacombs. Noah brings back Krark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. His opening hand contains a Wooded Foothills, Island, Mana Vault, Snap, Harmonic Prodigy, and his London Mulligans are Solve the Equation and Brain Freeze. Finally, we have Chad, piloting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. This is a Displacer Kitten deck that aims to resolve Kitten as fast as possible. It then abuses it as a massive value engine and combo piece. Chad's opening hand contains an Emergent Zone, Chrome Mox, Court of Calling, Diabolic Intent, Mana Crypt, and an Island. And Ashani gets to start us off. Ashani draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He passes. Greg draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts Mox Amber. He follows it up with a Deathrite Shaman. He ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault. He ships the turn to Chad. Chad draws and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Imperial Seal. He casts Mana Crypt. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He plays an Island for turn. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two thralls. He passes. At the end of Chad's turn, Ashani cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield tapped. Ashani draws and plays a Beseju who endures. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and he creates four treasures. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts its commander, Corval, Fake Hurst King. It enters and he sacrifices Dockside Extortionist. Corval triggers, he draws, and Corval gets a counter. He cracks a treasure, adding a black. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He casts Reanimate, returning Dockside to the battlefield, losing two life. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He cracks a treasure, adding a green. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He cracks a treasure, adding a red. Corvold gets another counter, and Ashani draws. He repeats this process four more times, drawing four cards and giving Corvold four counters. He casts Deathrite Shaman. He cracks another treasure, adding a black. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He casts Mana Crypt. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding a Scalding Tarn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He cracks it, adding a red. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws again. He casts Summoner's Pact. He fetches up a Witherbloom Apprentice into his hand. He cracks his last treasure, adding a green. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He casts Reign of Filth. He sacrifices Beseju through Reign of Filth, adding a black. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws again. He casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws, and then adds four black. He casts Necromancy, reanimating Dockside. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He cracks a treasure, adding a black. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He cracks the rest of his treasures, drawing three cards and adding three more counters. He casts Abrupt Decay, targeting his own Necromancy. Necromancy is destroyed and triggers, forcing him to sacrifice Dockside. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He sacrifices Blood Crypt through Reign of Filth, adding a black. Corvold gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Chad. He fetches up a card from Chad's library into exile. He casts Chad's Demonic Tutor from exile. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding 5 black. He casts Witherbloom Apprentice. He casts Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Witherbloom triggers, and in response, Ashani holds priority and casts Autumn's Veil. Witherbloom triggers again, and each opponent loses 1. Then Autumn's Veil resolves, then Witherbloom's other trigger resolves, and each opponent loses 1. Then Chain of Smog resolves, Ashani discards 2 cards, and then continues the chain, targeting himself. Witherbloom triggers each time, dealing 1 to his opponents. He repeats this process over and over until the table is dead and Ashani wins the game. Wow, what an explosive win by Ashani. 
The table has one more left in them, so they go for round three. Ashani brings back Corvold, Fake Curse King. His opening hand contains a Blood Crypt, Shallow Grave, Wish Claw Talisman, Assassin's Trophy, Dockside Extortionist, Command Tower, and his London Mulligan is Crop Rotation. Chad brings back Thrasios Triton Hero and Tevish Zot Doom of Fools. His opening hand contains a Displacer Kitten, Bayou, Arcane Signet, Imperial Seal, Mana Crypt, and his London Mulligans are an Island and an Abrupt Decay. Noah brings back Krark and Sakashima. His opening hand contains a Volcanic Island, Island, Sol Ring, Tybalt's Trickery, Deflecting Swat, Ruby Medallion, and an In the Festivities. Greg brings back Thrasios Triton Hero and Vile Smasher the Fierce. His opening hand contains a Dockside Extortionist, Underground Sea, Volcanic Island, Carpet of Flowers, Ponder, Force of Negation, and his London Mulligan is a Badlands, and Ashani gets to start us off. Ashani draws and plays a Blood Crypt, into play tapped, he passes. Chad draws and plays a Bayou. He casts a Mana Crypt, he casts Arcane Signet, he casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. All set up, he passes. Noah draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Ruby Medallion. He ships the turn to Greg. Greg draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts Ponder. He looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws. All finished up, Greg passes. Ashani draws and the table braces for another turn to win. Ashani plays a Command Tower. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. The table stops holding their breath and knows they have at least one more turn. Ashani laughs at the table's reactions and gives the turn to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Spellseeker. It enters and he fetches up a Noxious Revival into his hand. He gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays an Island. He casts his commander, Kark the Thumbless. With his favorite self-imposed stacks piece on the board, Noah passes. Greg draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds two green through his carpet. He casts his commander, Thrasios Triton Hero. He gives the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and passing Wishclaw to Greg. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and he creates six treasures. He casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. He fetches up a Dosen, the Falling Leaf, onto the battlefield. The table sinks as they now have no way to stop Ashani. He casts Reanimate, returning Dockside to the battlefield, losing two life and creating six treasures. He casts his commander, Corval, Fae Cursed King. It enters, triggers, and Ashani sacrifices Dockside. Corval gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He cracks a treasure, adding a black. Corval gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He cracks another treasure, adding a black. Corval gets a counter, and Ashani draws. He casts Shallow Grave. He reanimates Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and he creates six treasures. He cracks four treasures, adding four black, drawing four cards, and giving Corval four counters. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks three more treasures and, well, you know, you get what happens by now. He casts Reign of Filth. He sacrifices Blood Crypt through Reign of Filth, drawing a card. He casts Peer into the Abyss. He draws half of his library and loses half of his life, rounded up. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He sacrifices Taiga, adding a black, drawing a card. He casts Underworld Breach. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three green and draws a card. He escapes LED. He cracks LED again, adding three black, drawing a card. He escapes Witherbloom Apprentice. He escapes Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Witherbloom triggers, and he drains his opponents for one. Chain of Smog resolves. Ashani continues the chain, targeting himself, with Witherbloom triggering each time. He repeats this process until the table is dead, and Ashani wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a set of games. Congrats to both Greg and Ashani on their wins. In game one, Greg showed the power of unconventional picks. He landed the pieces he needed and pressured the board with his unstoppable army of goblins. His key interaction kept the table at bay until he could close out the game. In games 2 and 3, Ashani showed just how much you need to mulligan for free interaction versus the turbo deck. He powered out strong wins on early turns not once, but twice in a row. He is a master of Corvold, and the entire PWP team fears its speed. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.